And now with the next presentation today with us, the British University in Egypt that will be, that will be presented by Prof. James Holness. Thank you. Good morning. Just going to work out where to stand. So my name is James, and I'm here today from the British University in Egypt. And I hope you don't mind, I'm going to do this all in English. So, I'll keep the English a little bit slower if I can, and try not to rush. We have a slogan at the British University, and it's learning how to think, not what to think. It's an important slogan, actually. It seems a little bit, I don't know, a little bit corny, but it's actually an important way of thinking about university. University is about not just learning technical content, it's also about learning how to make decisions, how to gather information, how to use that information in the way that's most useful. So it's more than just learning raw information. If you want to learn, just learn raw information, you can go onto the internet. University is much more than that. So it's important to remember that. Okay? And that's part of the reason we keep this as our slogan, because it is important. So, before I tell you too much more about the British University in Egypt, I want to get you to think a little bit. Okay? I'm getting you to how to think, yeah? Not necessarily what to think. So, your generation is going to face a whole heap of challenges. A whole, whole group of new challenges. And there'll be more challenges coming in the future. But there's no doubt the world is evolving. We're all aware of climate change. It's not that long ago we had the COP27 here in Egypt. So we're all aware of climate change. We're all aware of things like desertification. We're all aware of the, the ice caps melting. We're all aware of global warming. We're all aware of these concepts and the challenges they face. Whether you think they're man-made or not, to some extent is irrelevant. It's happening. And you have to deal with that. They are the challenges or one of the challenges that you will have to face. As a result of this and other things, things like food security are becoming a big issue, a big concern. The economic situation in the world, conflict in the world. Again, climate change will lead to things like food security being, becoming an issue. We've just come out of a, a massive global pandemic and who's to say we won't face such things again? Again, it doesn't matter how you think that came to be, that situation may come to be again. So there are more challenges potentially to face there. Artificial intelligence. Possibly, possibly the biggest challenge that we all will face. Depends how you see it, but for all of us, there are going to be challenges. AI is going to change the whole world. There's no doubt about that. Okay? And at the moment, it's, it's relatively unrestrained. That may change. We don't know. But again, we don't really know where AI is going to take us. We do know that potentially many, many jobs will be displaced. Many, many things that we take for granted now and we do now we may not be doing. AI may take the place of that. And how we work alongside that AI, or how we adapt to the integration of AI, that's what we need to figure out. I mean, there's a whole two-week lecture on this. Okay, so I'm just skimming the surface here of potential challenges. And the other challenge, I hate to say it, is a similar challenge to that which I grew up I grew up with a long time ago, 
and that's the constant threat of conflict. The world is becoming a very unstable place. There's lots of economic, lots of political pressure in many parts of the world, and conflict is a worry. We all know about the conflict in Europe at the moment. So, is this scary? Do you, as young people, find any of this scary? It certainly should be something that is on your mind. But the reality is, you have to face it. So what are you going to do? Now, you have to face it, as I said. So for you, the best way to deal with this is to try and see the opportunity in these challenges. If you're thinking about what you're going to study at university, if you think about those challenges, it's inevitable that it will create opportunity. If you think about climate change, for example, perhaps engineering programs that are more biased towards sustainable engineering. If you're thinking about AI, perhaps getting ahead of the curve and becoming an AI expert yourself. So studying computer science with an AI specialization. So just thinking hard about what the challenges are that are coming up and looking at degree programs that align with how you might equip yourself to deal with those challenges. So I'm guessing many of you have decided what you want to do, but I know there will be many of you who haven't yet decided what you want to do at university. So, the beauty of an event like this is there's an opportunity here for you to gather information. Be informed. Go and visit all the different stands. Go and visit universities. Learn as much as you possibly can about what you might want to study at university. Be aware. There's lots and lots of influence out there. Be informed, though. Gather good information. I want you to come and see us at the British University in Egypt stand, but I also want you to go and explore and learn as much as you possibly can about what you want to study, okay? And about where you want to study it. And finally, on this part of the talk, just a quick idea about how you may want to formulate your decision making. So there's a Japanese philosophy that I like to talk about, which may help you try to just think about what it is you want to want to study at university or want to get where you want to go with your career and it's based around this idea of ikigai. The concept is formulated about taking what it is that you love to do, taking what you're good at, thinking about what society and what the world needs and then balancing those three things with what you can actually earn a living from. If you can balance those four different areas, this philosophy suggests that you have the best probability of enjoying your working life, enjoying your, your life. Okay? Now, I can't promise that this is going to make it for all of you, but it's just an interesting way to try and balance those different pressures, those different things that are making you or helping you make your decision about what to study. So now I'm just going to tell you a little bit about the British University in Egypt. I hope that you will come and cross and see us at our stand. We're just by the entrance, so please come across and have a chat with me and the team. We're an 18-year-old institution. We are a result of a relationship between the British government and the Egyptian government. As such, for most of our degree programs, you will be awarded both a British degree and an international and an Egyptian degree. So you'll receive an international degree and an Egyptian degree. We're a comprehensive university. We teach most subjects. We've got about 11,000 students. We have a growing uh, number of international students. We've got a solid ranking according to the Times Higher Education rankings. And as I said, we teach most subject areas. We have a number of different subjects in the medical area. 
including dentistry, pharmacy, and nursing. We have a number of technical subjects, degrees in engineering, environmental engineering and energy, and informatics and computer science, where you will find specializations. Okay, so we have a massive array of different engineering programs. Again, come and see us. You can have a little look at our list of different engineering programs. And we have our arts and humanities, our arts and design programs. We have law, economics, political science, business. Again, we are comprehensive, so we teach most things. I'm just trying to... Just waiting for the next slide. Just waiting for a couple of slides. Ah, ah here we are. So as I mentioned, we've got a number of different partners. So again, depending on which subject you study, this relates to which partner we have. But London South Bank, Queen Margaret, and Manchester Met are our partners and award our UK degrees. This is just a list of some of our international partners across the world and some of the places we try to send our students. We hope that many of you who join us will try to get some international experience and we offer summer exchange programs, semesters abroad, summer trips for our final year students. So again, trying to get you to give, get some international experience. And as well as a strong academic series of programs, we also have a very good student life and a very good student support system. So we have our student hub where we have a range of different support systems for students. We obviously have transport facilities, we have on-campus dormitories, we have sports facilities, food court. It's an enormous campus, it's nearly a kilometer long and we have everything that you would need available in very close proximity. We are located in Shrook, so we're across in the east. Our new sports facilities are being developed as we speak. So we now have paddle courts, basketball courts, swimming pool. We have a gymnasium being built. And as I said, we pride ourselves on having a very strong balance between academic excellence and student life and student support, all bringing together the student experience. And to that end, I should mention our clubs, lots of different clubs and societies. If we don't have a club or society at the moment, we'd help you start a new one. So we have an enormous number of things going on to support your development, not just academically, but also in the related academic areas. So again, I'm going to hand over to my colleague who's just going to talk about entry requirements. But remember, it's all about learning how to think and not what to think. So thank you for listening to me. I'm going to hand over to my colleague now who will talk to you a little bit about entry requirements. Please come along and see me. I'd love to meet you, love to talk to you. Thank you. Thank you, James. Thank you, Dr. James. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Ahmed Mohsen from uh, Admission Office at the British University in Egypt. It's my pleasure to be with you today to inform you all the admission entry requirements. But first of all, let me confirm that uh, إحنا بالنسبة لكلياتنا إحنا بندي اثنين بكالوريوس. لما الطالب بيخلص دراسة بياخد اثنين بكالوريوس. بياخد بكالوريوس معتمد من المدرسة على الجامعات المصرية عشان يتسجل في النقابة المختصة. وبياخد بكالوريوس تاني معتمد من أحد جامعاتنا اللي في يوكي إحنا معانا بارتنرشيب مع ثري يونيفرسيز معانا مع جامعة لندن ساوث بانك مع مانشستر متروبوليتان مع كوين مارجت في إدنبرا الطالب بتاعنا بياخد الاثنين باتشلر ديجري الباتشلر المصري والباتشلر المعتمد من المجلس من من جامعة من الجامعات الشريكة في إنجلترا المفروض طبعا ان احنا بالنسبة لقواعد قواعد القبول عندنا الادميشن ريكويرمنتس 
كلها خضعة للمجلس الأعلى للجامعات المصرية، إحنا تبع المجلس الأعلى للجامعات المصرية، بمعنى إن إحنا لنا انتري ريكويرمنتس معينة. لو أي جي إحنا عارفين لازم يكون لو مقدم كلية زي الكلية سواء كلية أسنان أو كلية صيدلة أو كلية تمريض، لازم نكون معانا ثمانية أو ليفلز والثمانية أو ليفلز دول يكون فيهم الإنجليش والماثماتكس والفيزكس والكيمستري والبيولوجي. هي هي الموضوع كله بالتفصيل نفس قواعد المجلس الاعلى للجامعات المصريه في القبول عندنا الكليات متقسمه ل 3 سيكشنز في اللي هي ساينس سيكشن فاكلتيز والماس سيكشن فاكلتيز والنيرسنج سيكشن والارت سيكشن فاكلتيز الجامعه بتقدم خصومات كويسه جدا على المصاريف الدراسيه للطلبه المتفوقين بمعنى حسب مجموعك ليك خصم كويس قوي عندنا كاتيجوريز ممكن توصل في الخصم بتاع مجموعك بس لغايه 30% بجانب ان انت لما تقدم في الجامعه عندنا وتيجي تعمل الداون بيمنت للقسط الاول من المصروفات بتاخد كمان 10% اكسترا يعني ممكن يوصل خصمك لحد 40% برضه هنتكلم على نوع تاني من الخصومات لو احنا بنلعب رياضه معينه لو حق لو حد محقق مركز اول او تاني او تالت على مستوى العالم ممكن خصم بتاعه يوصل حتى 80% ولو محقق مركز اول او تاني او تالت على مستوى المستوى المستوى مصر بياخد لغايه 40% المفروض ان من دلوقتي الابلكيشن بتاعتنا شغاله اونلاين يا ريت تقدر تخش تعمل اونلاين ابلكيشن من دلوقتي وتسجل كل البيانات بالتفصيل بتاعتك تسجلها بالتفصيل واهم حاجه يبقى الايميل لان اي تواصل هيبقى عن طريق الايميل طبعا لو ثانويه عامه انت بتسيب رقم جلوسك وبعد ما تخلص الابلكيشن بيجي لك اوتو ريبلاي ايميل في انك ستيب ماشيه ازاي اهم حاجه احنا عاملين ايميل مخصص لكل شهاده سواء ثانويه عامه سواء اي جي سواء اي بي سواء امريكان دبلوما كل كل نوع من الشهاده ليه ايميلات معينه عندنا ايميل اسمه انترناشونال دوت سيرت at boe.edu.eg ده للشهادات الدولية والاي جي وكل التفاصيل بتاعتها المفروض ان انت اول ما بتخلص الابلكيشن زي ما قلت لك وبتعمل سبميت الابلكيشن بيجي لك اوتر باي ايميل فيه كل الديتيلز ديت عشان تقدر تراسل الجامعة فيها أه اسمحوا لي بالنيابة عن الجامعة وعن زمايلي ادعوكوا عندنا في الجامعة في عندنا اوبن داي وي ار اوفرينج اوبن داي نيكست وينزداي ات 6 بي ام فاللي يحب يشرفنا ان شاء الله ويحضر في الجامعه معانا يشوف الجامعه على ارض الواقع يشوف الجامعه بدكاترتها بادارتها بمعاملها بكل تفصيله حسب الكليه اللي انت مهتم بيها هتحضر الاوبن داي دوت ده دي دعوه عامه لكل الطلبه المتقدمين. بالنسبه لاخر حاجه بس عايز اكد عليها موضوع الانجلش بليسمنت تيست. الطلبه الاي جي او الطلبه الانترناشونال ما لهمش انجلش بليسمنت تيست بيخشوا الجامعه عندنا من غير انجلش تيست. انما الثانويه عامه او اي شهاده عربيه اخرى يا اما يكون معاه الايلتس او انه بيعمل امتحان معايا سهل جدا اسمه لينجوا سكيل وده امتحان بسيط مش صعب اول ما بيسجل عندنا في الابلكيشن واول ما بيحجز الميعاد بيجي له ديمو عشان يتدرب على الانجليش تيست انا حاولت ان انا اسمرايز كل الانفورميشن احنا بالنسبه لنا البوس بتاعنا موجود جوه يشرفنا جدا اي سؤال اي استفسار وان شاء الله تشوفكم في الجامعه عندنا السنه دي ان شاء الله شكرا يا جماعه شكرا